and he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. <clears throat> For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Family is not everything. Let's pray. Holy Father God in heaven, what a magnificent day you have given to us. And I am a firm believer in what your servant Spurgeon said, it is all of grace. The two previous services, all of your grace. Everything that has been done since the last service, all of your grace. And Holy Father God, we are here once again at the Gospel Light House of Prayer, Sunday evening evangelistic service, <clears throat> continuing the campaign. Just Jesus evangelistic campaign that has done its job and uh, and is still doing the job by your might, your power, your mercy, your love, and your grace. <clears throat> I give you glory, praise, and honor. Give it all to you because all of it is due your name. And Holy Father God, I praise you and I thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and your Holy Spirit and your Holy Word. Have mercy and grace upon each and every one of us where we have sinned against you in any way. Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us for all of our sins. And we, from our hearts, by your grace, forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord, we do not want to grieve your Holy Spirit or quench your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I do pray that nobody does that here, nobody does that out there, so that your Holy Ghost can flow freely uh, in this sin-cursed world as we serve you here. Wash and cleanse our hearts, minds, souls, spirits, and consciences in the precious blood of Christ. Crush and crucify, Lord, our wicked, evil, and ungodly flesh within us, anything that's not like you. Lord, help us to die to self. Fill us all with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty, the Lord of your Holy Spirit. Put a God in our hearts, our minds, our tongues, our attitudes, and our temperaments that we would not sin against you. And Lord, I do pray that you would deliver us from temptation, evil, and sin. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to love right, live right, think right, and do right. Now, Holy Father God, I thank you so much for the first prayer meeting this morning and then the two great services uh, standing between the living and the dead service. Number one, standing in between the living and the dead service, number two. And now, Lord, in the, and since then, we thank you for the prayer meeting we had led by you. And uh, I thank you for what you did in that prayer meeting and through that prayer meeting.
And Holy Father God, I thank you for uh, an amazing idea and change that could have been done a long time ago, but uh, I thank you for showing it to us uh, tonight. Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would cast out the devil and the demons of hell and the satanic demonic spirit of Judas, Jezebel, Sanballat, and Tobias. Lord, cast out the satanic, demonic spirit of betrayal and sabotage, treachery, pride, stubbornness, rebelliousness, foolishness, hindrance, and uh, distraction, Lord, from this entire uh, service. And from the people who have that problem, and from the people who have that problem here and out there, uh, Lord God in heaven, I thank you for revealing to me that we do have to battle that evil. But Lord, I thank you for giving us the victory over it, and I do pray that you give us sweet victory again today this evening in this service and Holy Father God I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I thank you for what you have laid on my heart regarding this very important message that I hope will set individuals free set fa families free to worship you and to serve you and to put you first to put your kingdom first to put calling that you put upon people's lives first. For the truth of the matter is family is not everything contrary to our society and contrary to our world and certain communities. You're everything. And doing your will is everything. So, Lord, I thank you for showing me that many years ago. <clears throat> and thank you, Lord, for us to get to this passage so that we can dig down deep into it and help people overcome uh, some wrong ideas and gain the victory through Christ in their lives. Our Holy Father God, we pray that you demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit. We are weak and feeble, and I pray for your unction and your anointing, your freedom and your liberty, and the power of your Holy Spirit to preach your Holy Word and to preach your Holy Gospel. And Lord God in heaven, I pray that you would rebuke and bind the devil and the demons and his host from this time. And I pray that you would save those who are lost, revive those who are saved, and Lord, have your Holy Ghost to move mightily upon the hearts and minds and lives of those gathering around the world on various and sundry platforms and those who are here. And Lord, I do pray that your holy name will be glorified, Jesus Christ exalted, and uh, lost souls saved, Christians encouraged and revived, and uh, I pray.
pray that they'll go away from here tonight thinking differently about you <clears throat> and about family. Because family is not everything. You are everything. God is everything. Jesus Christ is everything in every way. And so we pray now in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> yes, sir. I want to see it here too. I still want to see it right here. Okay, you got this is showing up. Uh, evidently, the camera is this is partly blocked. So I want to use phone to. Testing one two three. Okay, okay, and uh, you need to refocus that. Look at look at look at this right here. Refocus that. There we go. Let me see it. Brighten this up. Let me see. Add that to the thing that's this green. Just a little bit. Just leave that. Okay, leave, leave, leave it. Leave it. Wait a minute. Leave it up. Let me see that. Okay. Right here. Tilt it this way. Just a little bit. It's coming back in. No, no, right here on, on the camera. No, 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 this, this way, yeah. No, no. Just the back end. You see that, you see this right side? I want, I want to refocus that and get that out of there. And just have the 
Ladies and gentlemen, we uh, believe it or not, we found a solution to a problem when we just re, uh, trying to get it refocused. That right side needs to, to disappear and just have the background. <clears throat> Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. You still, you still active over there? Can you hear it? Can you hear it better now? You can hear it better? Yes. Okay. What percentage? Okay. Uh, can you see it better? Okay. Excuse me, folks. We're trying to resolve this issue for you here. Okay, where is it at? Right here. Right here. This is. Better. There you go. See? Is that better? Is that corner cleared up? The right, the right hand, the right side, hand side. Is that cleared up now? Mm hmm. What? Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Can't get a, you can't get a tighter shot on, on this right, right here. It's just a one shot thing. Okay, look at this. This right here. This is an F on. Okay, you gotta you gotta be able to block that. See, I want this right here. I don't want anything over here. I, I need for you to focus on this right here. Whatever's over here, move this. And it's just, I want just brown background here. You got it? Whatever this. 
this is moving. Uh, that needs to be cleared away. Yeah, we'll go back to it. Okay, is that better? Is that better now? Huh? Okay, that's good. Now. See, when you learn that, it's very delicate, so be very careful. Okay, turn it this way so I can see it. Back in the uh, same box. Okay, is that better? Is that better? Okay. Okay. Can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me better than before? Same? Can you see me better? Can you see that right there better? Uh huh. What percentage? Huh? Ten. Okay. That's good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us. Uh, the Lord has answered prayer and resolved a technical problem we have been having over here. Over here. Let me go ahead and back away and face this way. thank the Lord for that. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for that special prayer meeting this afternoon. I thank you for revealing uh, to me a solution to a problem that we have been having. And uh, I thank you that that has been resolved, and I pray that going forward we will not have that problem. And uh, I do pray now, uh, as you have laid upon my heart, uh, a special message and a timely message. And I do pray that you will grant me your grace and your energy and your strength in the power of your Holy Spirit to preach it. And I pray that you will help the people to understand it and get it. As some of it may be hard for some uh, to take. But Lord, I pray that they will get it and run with it for your glory, your praise, and your honor. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Save those who are lost. Revive those who are saved. I pray that you demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit and have your Holy Spirit to speak 
to all of our hearts. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for a sake. Amen. Now go ahead on and check the other three. You did? Yes. Everything's perfect? Yes. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to preach in your hearing a message titled, Family Is Not Everything, Part 1, a, the beginning of a mini-series inside the major series, Just Jesus, Evangelistic Campaign that I have been preaching now for January the 1st will be five years, I believe, by the grace of God. And uh, right here, that is the room. You, you have to eat in there. And, um, and today I want to say in your hearing, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is not going to really go well with some of you, but that's all right. I hope that you get it. Dr. Greg Allen said, whoever hears the truth about Jesus and puts their faith in his sacrifice on the cross for them has entered into a saving relationship with Jesus. They so trust him and so love him that they walk in the steps that he commands them to walk. They prove their trust and love by obeying his commandments. For Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? By keeping his word and by loving others of his family as he loves them, Whoever does this is doing the will of the Father, and whoever does the will of his Father is a member of his family. If you will, his brother and sister and mother. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you read the Gospels and you read about Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ is pro-family. There's no doubt about it. He loves the family that he created. But Jesus Christ also knows that, like everything else, because of our sinful nature, we have corrupted and perverted every good thing and uh, we have a tendency in our society to make an idol of things. And some of us have made an idol of our families. And someone ran back the other day and said that we're so evil and so bad that we have made an idol of ourselves. Nothing, nobody comes, comes before God. Nothing and nobody comes before Jesus Christ. And if you read the Gospels through, you will think that Jesus Christ had a problem with family. He did not have a problem with family. He loved his family. He wants you to love your family. 
but he does have an issue with family folk, kin folk, when they get in the way of what you ought to be doing for him and, uh, and worshiping him and loving him and obeying him. <clears throat> And Jesus knew, as God uh, knew in dealing with Abraham, family can get in the way from accomplishing God's will and the Lord's will. And I believe with all of my heart that many men <clears throat> who were called by God to do something great for God, many fail to do so because they hearken to the voice of their wife. They love their wife and they love their children more than they love God. And God has a problem with that. Uh, one of the benefits of reading the Bible uh, uh, through is that you're going to see something new and different and um, that you've never seen before in the same book, the same chapter. <clears throat> Adam got all of us into trouble by hearkening to the voice of his wife and not to God. And then Abraham got himself into trouble. God told him clearly, I'm going to raise up a seed from your body don't you worry about it. And he told Ab Abram to look up into the sky. Can you count the stars? That's how your, your, your descendants will be. But uh, Sarai was barren. And uh, Abram was a little bit shaky, and uh, he hearkened to the voice of his wife. Oh, I'm not going to have any children. Let me give you Hagar. And the Bible said he hearkened to the voice of his wife. And Abraham had sex with the Egyptian woman, the black woman, and uh, Israel. And they've been in, they've been fighting ever since. Nothing, nothing but trouble, fighting against the, and hating the children of Israel. Abraham uh, created a problem by not obeying God. He hearkened to the voice of his wife. And right now, today, there's a bunch of people. Uh, the sinners of Israel want to wipe Israel off the map. They hate their half-brother more than everybody else in the world. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into this message a little bit tonight uh, fully, allow me to share a few more verses, a couple of verses, rather, that um, that shows you that Jesus had an issue with family. I'm sure you have heard the statement, family is everything. This is a popular quote, that blacks and whites uh, say all of the time. You know, family is everything. Family is everything. And then somebody else came along and said, family is everything until it is not. And then, 
someone came up with a quote, family is not an important thing. It is everything. But Jesus has an issue with that. And he made that clear throughout the Gospels. In one verse, Jesus Christ said, If any man come to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, Jesus was naming everybody, <clears throat> and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, does God want you to hate your family? Does Jesus want you to hate your family? No, God wants you to love your family. He tells you to do so. But in comparison to him, that love ought to seem like hate. Now, you can read all the versions, all of the weaker versions of the Bible. That's not the King James Version. And for some reason, they, they could not take that word hate out. They did not change that word. Evidently, in the Greek, it is hate. It's the word hate, as we know it. Your love for Jesus Christ ought to be so great that whatever you have for your family will appear to be or to look like hate when it comes down between the two. This is a very strong statement. If any man come to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, this is strong language. But Jesus is not, and Jesus is not being mean here. He just knows who he is and what he's about and what he's doing for everybody, including your wife and your mother and father, and your sisters and your brothers. He's dying on the cross for everybody. And I must come first. So from these two passages already, we see that family cannot be everything. And I have said this before, and I'm going to say this again, because this is a serious problem in the black community. And I believe the problem is they really don't have many people in, in many, many, not all, not all. There are many who really don't have a deep personal relationship with the Lord. They may have religion and church going and church events, but they, many do not have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so therefore, guess what? Their God is family. And they really believe that family is everything. Because that's really all they have. And that's what many people rely on, family. And, and there's nothing wrong with loving family like that. But, but you need to understand family is not everything. God is everything. Jesus is everything. And, and, and may I lovingly say to you, uh, it, it's just not wise to make family everything. You got to hold on to family loosely. This is why so many of you have indigestion and heart, heart palpitations and heart problems and troubles and, and, and everything else. You, 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 you caught up in your family, like you're God. You're not God. There's some family members you're going to have to turn over to God who can handle your family members. 
You gotta learn how to pray. Do you pray for your family? Or you just want to be around them all the time? See what's going on. What's happening. May I lovingly encourage you to hold your family loosely for several reasons. Sometimes, uh, as you will see in the next verse, family members can be your greatest enemies. The devil will use your family against you to try to hinder you. Some of the meanest people in the world are in your family. Some of the sharpest tongues in the world, they're in your family. Nobody can cut you like a mother or a grandmother or an envious sister or brother. Nobody can cut you down like a family member. But yet, we still say family is everything. We buy the t-shirt. A reunion t-shirt and that's just we sacrifice money and we rent cars and act like it's our own car and, and we go to the uh, family reunion trying to show out and uh, trying to impress everybody and, 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 and it's, it's, it's really no real love going on it's just everybody trying to uh, impress somebody and then you got the, the other a third of the family trying to get the hook up and so forth and so on And uh, so uh, we all know deep down that family cannot possibly be everything. Of God, we wouldn't have the family. Don't make family an idol. There are other reasons why you need to hold your family loosely. Some of your parents hold on, your, on to your children too tight. You need to understand that uh, it was not God's intention for them to stay with you for the rest of your life. You should not want that and they should not want that. That is not healthy at all. It is your job to raise them up for God for a short time and unleash them into the world to glorify God and serve God, to be a blessing <clears throat> to others and to you if you raise them right. My oldest son was a blessing to me on yesterday. Daniel White IV. He's been a blessing all year. The truth of the matter is he's been more of a blessing since he's been gone than when he was here. <laughs> I hope you're raising your children that way so that they can be more of a blessing when they're gone than when they're with you. Do the hard work of raising your children right for the glory of God. It's hard work, but it's, it's good work. And you're doing this under, as under God, man, woman, Okay, and one day they, they, you, you're going to encourage them and they're going to want to leave and they should want to leave at some point and you should want them to leave at some point. Your grown children that you have raised and they're going to leave and they should leave. And they may move miles and miles away from you, and that's good. If you See, if you have raised your children right, and you loved on them, and you spent time with them, and you have not done the American thing, where you have never, you, you're so busy trying to find yourself, and catch yourself, and trying to get the hookup with somebody, and running around, acting like a juvenile, and you didn't, you, you, you toss your children here, you put them in the daycare center, you put them in the school, you left them with... Uncle so-and-so, and then you took him down for the summer. 
had to get rid of them at grandmother's and, and, and the grandmother's house and all that. Now 18 comes around, 19, 20, you don't even know the children. And they don't know you. You missed out. Don't get mad with me. And listen to me very carefully. Some things cannot be remedied in life. Contrary to what your prosperity gospel preacher tells you. That's a lie. Everything can't be fixed. There are things that are time sensitive. Like raising your children. Spending time with your children. Hugging your children. Telling them I love you. Whether you feel like it or whether they feel like it. You need to do it while they're there. Because one day they will be gone in those 18 years, 19, 20, 21, 22, they will feel like a dream to you. And guess what Guess what? you will not have? You will not have any precious memories. You'll be going into the attic trying to find pictures and everything that you didn't even take. And cherishing the ones you did. But I'm here to tell you, if you raise your children right... And you spend all you spend all the time you possibly possibly can spend with them. And if you are a child of God and you raise them for God, you have precious memories. So many precious memories flooding from your heart and mind and soul and spirit. Uh, it bless your heart until the day you die. But you got to hold your family loosely. Children got to hold their. Loosely. Parents got to hold their children loose because they will leave if you didn't do your job because you're going to hurt. You're going to cry. You're going to boo-hoo. And uh, uh, for because you're going to really the American way uh, is not God's way. You went the American way with your children and not God's way. And the American way is that you don't spend the time you're supposed to spend with your children. You kick them off to other people from the time they are born. You put them in daycare center kindergarten and then first grade and you can't wait to get rid of them and dump them on somebody else and uh, then you then you had them caught up in everything they were uh, golf they were in soft playing soccer playing football playing basketball playing this and that playing hanging out with the friends their friends know them better than you do and then 18 comes around and you look at that stranger and you don't even know that stranger and that stranger does, does not know you you have no real connection. That's why they're going to do you with the phone in, your, in, in their face. They got more friends on the phone uh, than you'll ever know. That know them better than you do. You need to go back to the old-fashioned way. <clears throat> and, and, and you know what? Stop trying to get everything. And... Uh, And, and the mother should stay home and raise her children and be there for her children and homeschool her children. That's the best way to spend time with your children. So Jesus Christ had an issue with the family. He, he, he didn't have a problem with the family. He had an issue with the family as did God when he had to pull Abram, Abram out of the earth of the Chaldees. <laughs> Get him away from his family. <laughs> but see, God knows how family, how the situation is. Because God knows that you'll make an idol out of your family. Yes, you will. Mm -hmm. And you start saying stupid things like family is everything. Family is not everything. Never has been. How can it be everything when God is everything? How can it be everything and God is the one who gave you the wife? God is the one who gave you the husband. God is the one who blessed you with the children. You didn't do that. Look at me. I, I, I made her have those children. You didn't do anything, man. God, God is the one who created that soul, man, and that spirit. 
God, man. And, and, and you just have them on loan. You got the privilege to raise them. See, this is why if you mess up with God and start talking stupid about divorce and remarriage and all that right there, he'll take the children <clears throat> as punishment if you, don't, if you don't do it right. If you don't do right by God and those children that he bless you with, that he loaned to you to raise, to, to enjoy, and to, to have the privilege to watch movies with and eat popcorn with and eat pizza with and all that right there. You neglect them and you go out here and whore around and whatever, whoremonger around, and you divorce. I've seen it happen many times. Don't tell me it does not happen. God, God will. First, first of all, the children are going to be so hurt and devastated, no matter what you say. Second of all, God does not want that. He does not want divorce. He hates divorce. So does Jesus, by the way, Old Testament and New Testament. And so, I mean, God bless you with the children. Now, you want to send one, you want to send them to California for three uh, weeks and then back to New York for the, uh, 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 okay, God, he, he'll, just, he'll just bring them home. I've seen him do it. You won't see the children again. All kinds of things. They were not uh, uh, react to you as they used to when you were somebody else. And they can't stand them. Okay? So you, you better you better stay stay with the one you with. And raise your children for the glory of God. And do something. Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 36. Jesus Christ said these words, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Jesus tells everybody who would be sold out for him that before you try to make an idol of your family, you will have some Judases in your family. Some of your will be they of your own household. Okay? So I just wanted to share a few more verses with you uh, to show you how that Jesus Christ does not have a problem with the family. He created the family. But he has an issue with the family when it comes down to those that are supposed to be saved and love him. He does not want you to get it twisted. You understand? He does, <laughs> I'm telling you. He does, not want it, he does not want you to get it twisted where you will obey your wife, sir, more than you obey him. And that's what we got going on in the sweet evangelical circles of America. All of this syrupy, saccharine foolishness and mess. Uh, you can tell God no, but you can't tell your wife no. That's, that, see, that's how we got into the mess we're in. That's how Abraham got into the mess. We're dealing with stuff right now. Listen to me very carefully, and I love Abraham, Abraham and I respect Abraham. <clears throat> He's the father of faith. We thank God for him. But we're dealing with some mess right now in the Middle East because of Abraham hearkening to the voice of his wife today. And have been for years. 
And of course, you know we're dealing with some mess because of Eve and, and Adam hearkening to the voice of his wife. You can go ahead, if you're not going to check that, just go ahead and take that off. If you're not going to check that, take that. Just go ahead and take that off so that I can. I can I can see it right here. You still good right here? And so, uh, uh, love God first. God is everything. Jesus Christ is everything. Not your husband, not your wife, not your children, not your brothers, not your sisters. God has, he does not have a problem with you having family love for them. But don't get it twisted now where you're going to start loving them more than him. He, he, just don't mess with God like that. Don't mess with the Lord like that. Don't provoke the Lord like that. He'll take the family away. That's right, I said it. Do you hear me? God, he, he, he'll take them away one by one. And he has many ways to do it. If you make them an idol, as so many people have done in America. And see, I, I mentioned the black community because, and, and here's what the deal is, the reason why they do that is because they really don't have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with God, many of them. And so family is everything. And, and if you, you're not all tied down and hooked up with the family and then connected with the family and going to all the uh, 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 family reunions, you know, you're not with it. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't believe in a core principle of the American life, family is everything. See, true Christians don't believe that. True born-again Christians do not believe that. That's not even in their minds. That does not even enter into their minds. Because they know that family can be a problem when it comes down to Jesus Christ. Especially, especially in the black community because everybody is religious now. Everybody is in the church. Oh, boy, I was in the church way before you were born, boy. Uh, he was in diapers. Boy, I was one of the times. And, uh, and uh, getting drunk. No, you can't tell me nothing about it. Don't bring that Bible in, boy. You can't tell me about it, Lord. Boy, I'll tell you something. Family, see, God knows family can be a problem as far as your dedication to him. And, and Jesus is making it very, very clear and very, very plain, don't do that. <laughs> do you understand that I made you? I created you and I redeemed you. So do not get it twisted. I come first. Have you noticed something about real authority? They, they dictate to you and tell you how you're going to approach them and how you're going to address them. See, this God, this is God. Okay, this is what God did. He told you, he, he told you, the creatures, how you're going to not take my, don't take my name in vain. You understand? People who have, I mean, uh, beings and people who have real authority, they will tell you how you can address them and so forth. Even human potentates and kings and queens, there's certain things that they, they, have, they, they have instructed society how to address them, how to approach them. And if you don't address them properly and approach them properly and make sure you don't touch them then you're going to get a cold shoulder. Or you're going to get a guard with a red coat on to come pull you aside. No, no, no. You can't, you can't touch the queen. You might be the president, but you can't touch the queen. See, she has divine authority. You got political authority. That's people. People. Oh, 
God put me on the throne. You understand? <laughs> so Jesus is making it very clear. And, and it ought to make you understand that uh, he knew who he was. He wants you to know who he is. As humble and as uh, 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 what is the word I'm looking for? As humble and as meek and lowly in mind as he was. In these verses here, he's letting you know what time it is. I mean, in his loving way, he's telling you now, I come first. Understand? Not your family. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Uh, uh, I made your wife, so I can't, I can't come behind her. I made your children. You can't be making decisions based on what they got to say about me and how you going to serve me. No, no. Uh, yeah, and so, ladies and gentlemen, I have so much more to say to you, and um, and I, I, I'll just say it to you next week if the Lord tarries is coming and we live. But I thought I'd just share that with you by way of introduction. Uh, And so, with that, my beloved, I would like to leave the, this with you. Uh, before I come to a close, Once again, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he, Jesus, answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? Now, see, some will try to say, you know, Jesus was not, you know, Jesus was being rude or something. No, Jesus was never rude or disrespectful to his mother or to his family. But, but please understand, Ju Jesus knew who he was. And he was very blunt at certain points, especially when it came down to family. And he did not play. He didn't play. He, when it came down to his mother, he loved his mother, of course. But she knew who his father was, his real father, it wasn't Joseph. So, so at the, at the uh, wedding in Cana, you can say what you want. It was not disrespectful. Jesus would never be disrespectful to his mother, but he was abrupt. Can I say that? This is abrupt. Now, he, he knew what he was doing. <clears throat> He was straight, can I say, may I say, he was straightforward? Because we all know what the deal is, you know, everybody in my family. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. Now, I thank God, I, I, you know, thank God that my dad and I, we connected after I got saved, because he got saved. I, I believe he got saved through the pre preaching of Billy Graham. And I say this 
with all due respect. He, I know he didn't get saved through the black church. He didn't, not where we lived at. But I never heard the gospel, and he never heard it. But he, he loved to listen to Billy Graham. And so I thank God that my dad and I had a connection. And for a while there, my baby brother and I had a connection as far as my immediate family. And uh, before I got married and so forth, and even after I got married. Uh, and so I thank God for the few in my family that we, we 